Mount Vernon Mills is an international manufacturer of textile, chemical, and related products for the apparel, industrial, institutional, and commercial markets. The company has about 2,600 employees and operates 14 production facilities in the U.S., as well as in Latin America, the Caribbean, and Asia. I'm David Greenfield, Editorial Director of Control Engineering, and I'm here at Mount Vernon Mills facility in Tryon, Georgia, with Jonathan Payton, electrical engineer for the Denim Manufacturing Plant, and we're here today to discuss the plant's recent in-house manage upgrade to the finishing line and rebeamer operations. Now, Jonathan, I understand that your first automation upgrade project didn't quite work out as originally intended. Explain what happened with that project and how it led you to handle the upgrade yourself. Uh, yes, that would be the same for risers. We originally took out DC drives, put in AC drives. Uh, we had a vendor come in to design all this and do it for us. Uh, we had problems with the HMIs in particular, uh, where you would touch a button and the darn thing would stay in occasionally. Nobody could explain it. We tried everything, uh, talked to the vendor. They couldn't help us. Uh, we were very frustrated with it. It caused a lot of damage to the equipment. Actually caused some parts to break. Uh, caused quite a bit of downtime. So we decided that we were going to try our next project in-house. Uh, that way if we, if we have any blame, it's going to be our own that we're going to get in trouble for and not somebody else's. Now how did you rationalize this? You know, how were you able to allocate resources for such a major in-house project? We were going to do it in steps as much as we could beforehand. Uh, like weekends when it was down or a holiday when it was down. We were going to prefab as much as we possibly could. Uh, a lot of the wiring was done beforehand. It was actually laid on top of the old wiring. The old wiring was removed later. So we put it out in stages this way so we wouldn't have so much to do right at the very end. Now you initially planned on doing this automation upgrade in your spare time over a period of three months but ended up getting only three weeks to do it over a planned plant shutdown with no time for testing. You know, what happened here? Can you explain that? Yeah, it was a lot of breakdowns in the mill, a lot of putting out fires. Uh, in a couple of cases, actually, real fires. We had a couple of minor fires out in the plant. But uh, the, the real thing that I wanted three months for was the, the CAD drawings that I had to do, the programming, the programming of the HMI, the other things were kind of done in stages beforehand, so that helped a lot. But uh, I was so busy the entire time, really when it was being installed out there, I had no idea how I was going to write the program. It was all still out in the foggy part of my brain somewhere. Remaining to be done. Yes, sir. <laughs> Definitely. Now, to save time in installation and testing phase, you bought new back planes to bolt onto the backs of the old cabinets so you could assemble and test the new systems before installing them in the machine. Explain how you did this. Yes, we bought back planes so we could actually beforehand prefab these. In other words, we mounted all the drives directly on the back planes. The back planes were cut precisely to go in the original drive cabinet. So we could strip the original drive cabinet, we could take the back planes with the drives already on it, set it right in place, put four bolts in it, and it's done almost except for landing all the wires. And how, can you explain a little bit how the wires went, how, uh, how you removed the old wires and put in the new wires with the system? Okay, all the VFD cables, and as a matter of fact, all the cables, by this point, were all already in the cabinet. Uh, so we had to land them. Our contractor came back, who did the wiring actually from the cabinet out to the machine itself, and pulled the wires out. And I was concerned he'd have trouble getting them out, but he actually pulled all the wires right out from under the VFD cables and the other cables, and it worked great. Now, before the upgrade project, the finishing line was powered by DC drives with field regulators, and you upgraded to Durapult's AC drives. Explain the switch from DC to AC. That sounds like a project unto itself. You know, what all did that involve? Uh, yeah. We put a lot of fault into that ahead of time. Uh, there were some people here, and, and I myself was even wondering, would you use DC so long for this? In certain situations, we want to like pull out a wrinkle in the cloth if it's there. In other situations, you want a little extra slack in there. But we were concerned if we were really applying a lot of torque to it, 
could the AC drive do it at lower RPM? Uh, and several phone calls, a lot of research on the internet, uh, Automation Direct's website supplied me with a lot of the information that I needed, but also a call to an engineer at Marathon Motor. Uh, he explained that to me that with the right combination of drive and motor, we could go down to almost like one RPM and still sustain torque. And it works. He told me the truth. <laughs> Now that your control system is largely software-based, the operator has more control of the machine, including setup parameters, line speeds, trimming capabilities, as well as some fault indication and maintenance at screens. You know, how were these sorts of issues controlled before? And can you quantify any of the time and cost savings from these capabilities that you've added? A lot of cost savings as far as maintenance go. I couldn't give you an exact number. But on the machines originally, uh, most of these machines had nothing. Uh, if the machine went down, the operator had no idea why, and the electrician would have to come out with a meter and go through your control circuits and, and find out why. But now we have all these faults that come up on the screen. Even you can go into a help file and get suggestions as to what part might be at fault or what's wrong with it. Uh, we even have a map on the finishing range of the emergency stop, so it will flash to a screen and actually show you physically on the machine where that emergency stop is tripped at. So it saves a lot of time. Now, your first rebeamer upgrade project began with a plan to retrofit one of the rebeamers with a direct logic micro PLC, a Durapulse AC variable frequency drive, and a Seymour operator interface panel. Can you explain what drove the decision to go with this specific combination of technologies? Actually, the first rebeamer we kept DC. Uh, we started out with a cabinet full of relays, just old-fashioned relay logic. Stripped all these relays out, put one little small DL06 uh, PLC in there and took the place of all those, but we still kept the DC, but we did change it to a later drive. The original drive was obsolete. Uh, these drives we had a lot of problems with. We had 100% turnover of these drives in the first year. They all failed, every single one of them. Uh, then we went to another drive, uh, but they stopped making those in 230 volt, which is what we required. So we finally then went with AC drives and motors and the Seymour screen, uh, and it, it's a big difference. So it's kind of, I guess, a process of seeing what worked and what you can get yes, and go sir. with the options available. Yes, we wanted that. The Rebeamer projects were done in budget. We didn't have a separate amount of money set aside just to do those with. What our strategy was, because these parts were so obsolete, so expensive, so hard to get, was that we would take a drive, strip it, save all the parts, use the supply budget for that month to buy AC parts. And uh, Automation Direct definitely helped in that regard with their better prices. It's the only way we could stay in budget on those. Now, I've heard that you're looking to add some new functions and features as you continually refine your control systems for improved productivity. Can you clarify that a bit more? Uh, yes, I'd like definitely to do a die range next. It, it has obsolete drives in it as well. It's DC. We have still have many DC drive systems left in the plant that are in use. They're actually still productive, but the parts are becoming harder and harder to get. Uh, as far as is upgrading, we still do some upgrading as far as the software is concerned. In these, the HMI panels, we get a lot of feedback from operators, and this is kind of a continuous process. They'll come up with an idea, the operator will, and they'll say, can you do this? Can you do that? In most cases, we're able to manage to do it.